The four major mix-and-match monsters with the bodies of lions are griffins, sphinxes, chimeras, and manticores. I'm sure you can think of others, but these are the ones which I feel are most commonly confused for one another. It's not uncommon for the layperson to confuse griffins with sphinxes and or manticores, as all three are lions with the head of a different creature and sometimes wings. Furthermore, the manticore is also commonly confused with the man-tiger. In addition to having similar names, both also feature a man's head on the body of a big cat. Maybe. You see, the body of the man-tiger depends on context and, to a lesser extent, spelling. If it's spelled with an I, it's almost guaranteed to be a tiger with a human head, but if it's spelled with a Y or used in a heraldic context, it's probably a heraldic tiger. This mythical creature combines various features of a lion, a wolf, and a horse, not entirely unlike a heraldic panther. The man-tiger with an I can also be considered a subtype of Iloranthrope or werecat. In Dungeons & Dragons, these creatures which can transform from humanoid to tigerish are sometimes confused for Rakshasas, powerful shape-shifting demons that most often appear as humanoid tigers. D&D is also home to Bengal tabaxis, which are yet another kind of humanoid tiger-striped cat. That being said, manticores, man-tigers, and werecats are all humanoid big cat hybrids, and we should be focusing on avian big cat hybrids instead. Whether you prefer quills or scorpion stingers for your manticores, both it and the classical chimera are leonine monsters with venom-injecting tails. Serpent-headed tails are also sometimes seen on sphinxes and the opinicus, so it's easy to see how these creatures might become conflated. Alkes should not be confused with Alkes Alkes, which already has enough confusion surrounding it, so let me explain. There's a real-life animal with the binomial designation Alkes Alkes, or just A. Alkes for short. It has holarctic distribution, meaning it can be found in both North America and Eurasia, and on the latter continent it's known as an elk. Now, if you're American, and according to my viewer statistics you probably are, you probably associate the name elk with this animal, but its binomial designation is actually Cervus canadensis. It's called an elk in North America because when European settlers first saw one, they called it the name of an animal which they were already familiar with. When they later encountered A. Alkes in the New World, they couldn't call it an elk too, so they used the local Algonquin name, Moose. And, just to make things extra confusing, when Cervus canadensis was found living in parts of Northeast Asia, Europeans understandably didn't want to call it an elk as they had done in the New World, so they gave it the Algonquin name for the species, Wapiti. This means that Cervus canadensis has the European name for a moose in North America, but a North American name in Eurasia. Also, bonus fun fact. This is the coat of arms of Michigan, which appears on their state seal, and thus also on their state flag. Shame, minus one. Its supporters are C. canadensis on the viewer's left and A. alkes on the right. Locally, they call that an elk and a moose, but you could also say that they're a pair of elk, just of different species. It also seems as though we've drifted clean through how fascinating into flag shaming, so let's return to the Guide to Monsters. A heraldic creature which isn't a griffin, probably, but bears a strong resemblance to one, or at least to a demigriff, is the alphan. This creature, which is seen infrequently in heraldry and even less frequently outside of that context, is like the heraldic tiger, but it has more pronounced tufts of fur, a thicker mane, and a long lolling tongue. It is also frequently depicted with a knotted tail, and sometimes with the taloned feet of a raptor. Although the griffin and the alphan may seem to be linguistically related, sharing the latter half of their names, again like the Leocampus and Hippocampus, this is probably just a coincidence. The word alphan allegedly stems from the Germanic root word for wolf, metaphorically meaning hunter or pursuer. The name does, however, seem to be etymologically related to Enfield, a similar heraldic creature appearing in the Tudor period, which possesses a fox's head and taloned forelimbs on a canine body. In addition to tricorporate lions, we can also find occasional heraldic examples of lions by capitate. Although double-headedness is a heraldic trait more commonly associated with eagles, it's now got me wondering about combining the two, or four, to create a bicapitate griffin. This creature, which also has a head at both ends, has been identified as the Achaemenid griffin at Persepolis, but archaeologists now consider this statue to be a depiction of the mythical Huma bird, despite its lack of obvious wings. When I say Oliphant, you probably think of the Mumakil from Lord of the Rings, but the word can also refer to a special kind of hunting horn. The name was an archaic synonym for elephant, and the musical instruments were so named because the finest examples were made from elephant ivory. The legendary Frankish knight Roland owned an oliphant, and the Carla Magnus saga, or Saga of Charlemagne, tells us it was made from alicorn. One which actually existed is the Horn of Ulf, which was presented to the York Minster by a Norse nobleman in the 11th century. This oliphant has relief engraving around its mouth depicting fantastic beasts, generally considered to be griffins. 
Unlike classical griffins, though, these have more dog-like heads, as well as dragon-headed tails. As a reminder, the name griffin with two Fs and an O can also refer to kinds of dogs and vultures. The Ulf griffins are some combination of them with their canine heads and wings. The beast-headed tail is something you see more often on chimeras, though, which have lion bodies but also get a goat involved in the mix and don't traditionally have wings. The other place you'll sometimes see a tail head is on a Greek sphinx, which also has a lion's body, wings, and the head of a woman. Because of that last feature, they're also known as gynosphinxes, gyno being the Greek prefix for woman. This shouldn't be confused with the Greek prefix kino, meaning dog, as in kynocephaly, but it does mean a dog-headed lion like the ulf griffins could be called a kynosphinx, just like how hawk and ram-headed lions are called hyracosphinxes and creosphinxes, respectively. Gynosphinx? Kynosphinx? Yeah, I don't see those two ever getting mixed up. There was a Danish warship in the late 15th century called the Gribshunden, and because I speak German poorly, I recognized hund as meaning hound. I don't speak Danish, but I do have access to Google Translate, and according to that, grib means vulture, so the full name would be vulture hound, but the vessel is slash was also known as the griffin. Food for thought. If we accept the strangler hypothesis, that would tie sphinxes directly to lions, making a bull-headed lion a toro sphinx, or bullion, and I'm a little surprised I've never seen one historically depicted. It would certainly make more sense than the sock. As strange as it is, I'm actually quite taken by this creature, because I'm always a sucker for plant-animal hybrids, or planimals, which is also why my favorite starter Pokémon is, and likely always will be, Bulbasaur. If you created a sock using an androsphinx instead of a hyracosphinx, you'd have a lion with the head of a man and a flower for a tail, and I'd call it a planticore. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and groan. Don't confuse it with a platicor, which presumably also has a venomous rear end. I've also seen people put wings on hippopotamuses to create their own facetious hippogriffs, and I've even seen them add unicorn horns as well, making hippocoraptors, perhaps? If you put wings on a real-life unicorn, i.e. a rhinoceros, would you get a rhinoceraptor? If you replace the leonine anatomy of a griffin with the equivalent parts from a horse, you get a hippogriff. If you do the same thing to a winged lion, you get a terepus, but what would you call the result of this process applied to an opinicus? It'd be a hippogriff with the front legs of a horse, or a terepus with the head of an eagle, but as far as I know, there's no name for this hypothetical hybrid. I made up the portmanteau Hippopinicus, and googling it returned only three results, all leading to the fantasy author Paula Grover. In her 2019 novel, The Griffin, a Hippopinicus is said to be like a hippogriff, only they have two front limbs that are leonine, not avian. The character then goes on to say that an unsterilized keythong may quite possibly mate with a hippogriff and produce either a wingless hippothong or a hippocriffin, or a winged hippogriff or hippopinicus. I'm not sure what either of those first two creatures are, but I'm guessing that a hippothong is just a keythong with the hindquarters of a horse instead of a lion's. As a reminder, a normal hippogriff is the offspring resulting from the unlikely mating of a griffin and a mundane horse. Perhaps the creature which I call a hippopinicus is resultant of an opinicus breeding with a horse, and if a Minoan griffin replaced the opinicus, then perhaps we'd just get a bird-headed horse sans wings. The names of the manticore, sphinx, and griffin mean man-eater, strangler, and the hook. No joke, that's just rad. 